So today I want to go through the concept of phase inside the grid and show you a few interesting things you can experiment with. This video will be mostly about using phase to control time, but let me know if you're interested in something like phase distortion, and I will do my best to go through this idea in another video. So here I have the polygrid, of course this concept will work the same in the node grid and effects grid. I have here a simple voice and the gates device will be gating this voice. If I hit play, we can hear how it sounds like. Right now, the idea of phase is much simpler than it sounds, and it's basically a way to represent time and the movement of time. For those of you who are coming from Eurorack, for example, or other modular environments, you might know the concept of a clock signal. So here I have my Eurorack system, I have here a module that I can use to produce gates or triggers that I can use as a clock source. Again, this is usually how this will work in Eurorack. So if I use this pulse to advance a sequencer that I have here, right, with each pulse, with each gate, you will see the sequencer will move one step, as you can see here. Right, again, you can see this here on the scope, but also follow the lights here on the sequencer. You can see that with each gate, with each clock signal, the sequencer will advance one step. Right, so phase is just another way of representing a clock. So again, I will play this. And as with many other signals in the grid, also here, there is a pre-chord, right, connecting the phase directly to the respective modules, in this case, to the gates device. Right, for now, I will disconnect it. And even though the timeline is running, as you can see here, right, the phase signal is not connected anymore and the gates device is not running. So what we can do, we can use the phase in device, right, which will look like this. Right now we have access to this phase signal and we can also see exactly what's going on if I will use a scope here, right, just like this. Right, you can clearly see, maybe I will make this a bit bigger if I move it here, right? You can clearly see that we get a signal that goes up from zero to one, right? Then it jumps back to zero, just like a ramp signal. Right, another thing you can notice is that uh, when this signal is down, if I connect this back to the gates, Right, when this signal is down, we get step one. When this signal is up, we get the last step. In this case, it's a step number eight. Right, so this ramp signal is basically scanning through the gates device and different points on this ramp equal different steps. Right, so we have all of the steps of this uh, sequence of this gates device. Right now, if we had, let's say, 16 steps, still when the ramp is down, we get step one, and when it's up, we get the last step, or step 16 in this case. Right, so if I change this to step to 16 steps, right, again, the phase signal didn't change, we just changed the number of steps. When it's down, we still get step one. When it's up, we still get the last step. In this case, it's 16 steps or the steps num step number 16. And everything in between will basically scan through this device. Right, and now there are two things I want to show you. So first of all, I want to show you uh, that this is a simple ramp signal and nothing too special. So if I use something like the wavetable LFO, let me put this here, for example. Right, and I will take the index all the way up, so we get, again, the same shape, a rising ramp. I will also send this to the scope. Right, you can see this signal, and now I'm going to use this instead of the phase signal, right? So this, the LFO will go to the gates device. Right, maybe I will just change the speed here a bit. Right, and again, we get a rising ramp going from zero to one. Again, when it's down, we get step one. When it's up, we get the last step, step 16. Right, so we get more or less the same result. So again, just because it's called a phase signal doesn't mean that you have to use a special type of signal. You can use other signals as a phase signal. We will see this also later on with more examples. 
Right, so now I will remove this um, LFO, right, and instead I will use the value device, right, this one here, right, also this I will connect to the scope, and with this device I can send values again from 0 to 1, right, 0% will be 0, then I can go up, you can see this is the red trace there on the scope, 100% is 1, right, so I can send values from 0 to 1, so if I use this, as the phase signal, I can really show you how I can scan through this gates device, right? So I'm going to send the value to the gates device, right? And now zero is step one, and I start going up. You can see the sequence or the gates will start moving here, right? Step two, step three, step four, and so on. I can move also backwards. Right, depending how quickly I do this, this will change the speed. And round about, let's say, 96, 94, 95%, we get the last step. Now, if I go all the way up again to one, we will get again step one, right? So it's just, uh, so the end of the values is always step one, right? And like this, I can scan through the sequence. I'm not using a so-called phase signal, right? A dedicated phase signal. This is just values from zero to one, but still I can use this to scan through the sequence. Right, so again, the concept of phase basically relates to the timeline and the movement of time. It's nothing more than a ramp signal that scans through the devices. So now that we know this, let's dig deeper and look at a few examples. So the first thing we can do is easily create interesting polyrhythms. Here I have two voices. Right, for each voice I have a gates device and a pitches device, they are both set to play 8 steps. Right, you can also see the phase signal here on the scope. Right, now as we've seen before, the phase signal stays the same regardless of the number of steps. So when the phase signal is down, step 1 will be active, when it's up, the last step will be active again regardless of the number of steps. So for example, if I set a second voice to have 16 steps, and I will change this both to the, to the pitches and also to the gates, right? So now the second voice has 16 steps. At the same time, the first voice will play eight steps. Right here we have still eight. The second voice will play 16. So practically it will play twice as many notes, right? And it will sound like this. Right, you can see that even though the number of steps is different, step one will always be the same. They will always share step one, right? It will always happen at the same time. Right, now this is fun and all, but we can also go with something a bit more interesting, like setting the second voice to have only five steps. Right, so again, I will do this to the pitches device and also to this gates device. Right, so now the sequence is shorter and therefore will play fewer notes at the same time the first voice plays eight notes. Right, here we still have eight, but here we have just five notes, but again, they will always start together with the first voice, and the second voice will always share the first step, right? So now we will get an eight over five polyrhythm, and it will sound like this. Right, you can see, have a look. Step one is always the same, always together on both sequences. The phase signal is still the same. Right now, this doesn't have a, a doesn't need to happen only between two different voices. We can also disconnect or decouple the pitch sequence from the gates sequence. So, for example, we can have seven steps on the gates device. Right, so here we will have five, but here we will have seven. Right, so now we have polyrhythm between the two voices, but also within the one voice itself, between the um, pitches sequence and the gates sequence.
And now we start with something really fun, and that is deforming the phase signal, and by that affecting how time moves. Here I have a voice playing 16 steps, right? It will sound like this. Again, you can see the phase signal here on the scope. Again, just as a reminder, when the phase signal is down, we get step one. When it's up, we get the last step, in this case, step number 16. And again, it's basically scanning through this uh, pitches device, in this case. Now, in the phase menu here, or in the phase page, we have multiple modules we can use to deform, to shape or affect the shape of the phase signal and turn it from a ramp signal into something else that will also scan through the sequences differently. But So for example, if I use something like the band device, I will zoom in here a bit, right? This will go, I will disconnect the phase, send it first to the band, right? And now back into the scope, into this voice. Right, and now I can start bending this phase signal. Have a listen to what happens. Maybe I will open the filter just a bit. Right, have a look on the scope for the phase, on the sequence, how it runs, and have a listen also. Right now I'm bending the phase. You can see it starts slowly, and then as it tries, as it goes uh, closer to the last step, it will move quicker. Can do this also the other way around. Right, we can also use something like the pinch device. Right, again, this will deform the shape of the phase. You can see this on the scope. Right, we can use something like the mirror device, right, and get a ping pong sequence. And you can see it's basically a triangle wave. Step one will be down, last step, and then goes back down as a sort of a ping pong, as you can see it here. And this can have many different variations. Right, something interesting like this. And you can see the shape of the phase signal going up, down, and then jumping back to step number one. Right, every another voice playing more or less the same uh, sequence. This is uh, the red voice here. I will unmute this. Right, so that's another voice playing. And in this case, for example, I can make it play in reverse. Right, for example, by using the reversed device here, the reverse device. Right, again, I will disconnect the phase, send it first to the reverse, and then back to the voice and to the scope. In this case, it will start at one and then will go to zero, which means it starts at the uh, last step and goes backward in reverse to step number one, just as you can see here on the sequence. Right, so there are many ways you can take this phase signal and deform it, creating something a bit more unique. So now that we know that a phase signal can be in all sorts of shapes and it's all about the value of the signal, the amplitude of the signal going up and down, we can also use other sources as a phase signal. Here I have a simple eight step sequence. Right, again, I'm using for now the original phase shape that you can see here on the scope. But I can also use something like the wavetable LFO device, just like we've seen before. Again, it will output the same signal, a rising ramp. Right, so if I switch this, I will zoom in a bit. If I switch this from the original phase to the wavetable LFO, we get the same result. Right? I switch between them, we cannot even notice the change because it's exactly the same signal. A ramp goes up from 0 to 1. Right, but now we can use a different wave shape and get different results. So for example, if I go with something between a sine wave and a triangle wave, right, something like this.
right? Also here when the signal is down we get step 1, when it's up we get the last step. Since this shape goes up and down, right, something between a triangle and a wave, we get a ping pong like sequence just like we've seen before. Right, and now I can change the rate of this LFO and make it slower maybe if I change this to 2 bars. Right, we get something like a ping pong sequence that moves a bit uh, jittery even. Right, we can also go with something completely different and use the curves LFO as I have it here. Right, and get, we get, then we get a totally different result. Listen to this nice sequence again. The value goes from 0 to 1. In this case it goes in jumps, so it will jump step 1, step 3, step 1, step 5, step 1, step 7, and so on and so forth. Right, and of course we can also use a random source. If you want to have a few values and jump between them randomly, you can use a random source, here I have one with a dice um, device here, you can see it's a random source that moves in stepwise motion, it moves in steps, and this will basically scan randomly through the sequence. By the way, also in Eurek there are a few options for using a phase signal to drive sequencers. Here again you can see I have a rising ramp that I can use to drive, in this case, the voltage block from Aleco. That can run also with a phase signal or with a continuous signal and not only with the clock. Right, so if I connect this to the input, you can see the lights here, how they move according to this phase again when it's down it will be step one when it's up it will be the last step i can change the shape of it just like we've uh, seen now in bitwig right make it a sort of a triangle and you can see now it's moving back and forth basically using this signal as a phase signal scanning through the sequencer there are two more things that I want to show you. So first of all, we got some options here in the device phase, right? I have, for example, free run when stopped, usually off. If you turn it on, everything will run, even though the transport is not running. You can see now nothing is running, but if I turn this on, things will start moving forward, right? Even though the transport is not playing, right? So I usually have this off. Now we can also change the duration of the phase signal, right? By default, it will be set to one bar, right? So if I hit play, now the phase signal will have a duration of one bar. But again, we can change this. I can change this to two bars. Now it will run slower, right? I can change this to, for example, three eight notes, four eight notes. Right, you can change this to quarter notes, sixteenth notes, and so on. I will bring this back for now to one bar. Right, but this means also that you can sync things even when using a different signal. A signal. If you are not using the original phase signal, you can still have things in sync. So here, for example, if I disconnect again the um, pre-code here of the phase, I will use an LFO instead. Right, and this LFO, of course, we can sync to the transport. For now, it's set to one bar. Again, I can change this to two bars. So it will run slower. Change this to Opalach to, let's say, three eighth notes, just, uh, just like before. Right, and so on and so forth. I will bring this back to one bar, let's say. Right, for now, I will bring this back to the phase, so it will use again the internal phase. And now I want to show you how you can break free of the phase. Right here I have a second voice. In this case it's playing a five step sequence. Right, but again because we are using phase, the sequences will always stay in phase. In this case they will share the first step, just like we've seen in the last examples. Right, the first step will always be the same. So even though we have here five steps and here four steps, 
still they will stay in phase but what i want them uh, to do is to meet each other at different points and again there are various ways of doing this but in this case i will use the trigger device this is under data we have here the triggers device right this will convert the phase signal into a series of pulses a series of triggers and i will use the counter device this is under the phase here we have the counter this will convert the triggers back into a phase signal right so the triggers will go to the counter because i have here five steps i will change the counter to five right again i will disable the pre-code i don't want this to run with the original phase and i will use the counter instead right and now with each cycle both voices will be offset one has four steps the other one has five so this one will be offset by one step right and the first step will not always play together and what we are getting basically is polymeters right we have four steps here five steps here right here we have four here we have five and they will always be offset by one step and we break free from the phase right so that's it as you can see the whole concept of phase is very unique and can open up doors to many creative patching ideas i hope you enjoyed this video thank you for watching cheers